Howdy folks, welcome back to another out of spec renew video. What we have behind us here are a pair of Mitsubishi Aimeevs, both 2012s. And we bought these from a small used car dealer here down here in Independence, Oregon, about an hour, hour and a half south of my shop in Portland. And uh, both of these cars have some problems. So the one on the on this side here, the black one, has had the battery pack partially disassembled and it has a bad cell in it. Um, and the battery pack is currently out of it. The white one also has a bad cell, um, but the battery pack is still in the car and it does still somewhat drive, but obviously it also has some issues. But anyway, we picked up the pair of these cars for 1500 bucks, and the dealer here is actually going to transport them up to the shop for me uh, for two for a hundred bucks a piece. So all in, we're into these two cars for 1700 bucks, and hopefully we can get at least one of them or maybe even both of them back on the road where they belong. All right, so we've got, it's a couple days later. We've got both cars back here at the shop. I'm just bringing this one in, hopefully without banging anything up too bad, doing this one-handed on the forklift. I've got my wrecker attachment here which makes for moving around cars pretty easy. You can see I already got the black one unloaded there. And we've got the battery off here to the side as well, on the other side of my Model S there, so you can see it. But uh, I'm gonna set the camera down so that I can go ahead and get this car in position, and then we'll take a little bit of a closer look at the two of them. So we've got both of IMEVs unloaded there, and we've got the battery from the black one here. Good thing it's not raining today, which it has been pretty much every day for the last week. The lid here is just kind of sitting on here. It's not really sealed in place. I put a little bit of a rope on it just to keep it on there. Um, but yeah. So anyway, this battery was partially disassembled and it had one of the cells removed, which they had determined to be bad. The car dealership that had these cars had a mechanic that was working on them and I guess he moved away or gave up or decided he didn't, didn't want to work on it anymore, or something along those lines. So anyway, I think that uh, the transport guy that works for the dealer um, that brought him over here said that they had had him there for probably six or eight months. Uh, I guess they bought one and then bought the other one in the hopes of either fixing one or, uh, you know, trying to get both running or something along those lines. But anyway, we got the two cars here. Now the white one here does still have the battery in it. And uh, while I didn't get a chance to actually really test drive it or anything, I was told that it did drive at least at some point. So I got my jumper pack there. We'll try and jump start it and see what we can get going. But this one's in pretty decent shape. Interior could lose, use a little bit of a cleanup. Both cars do have their original EVSEs, which is kind of cool. Actually, I think both of them are in this one box. And these are some of the um, air channels. So the batteries on these are air-cooled. It actually has a fan that pushes air around. So this, I think, is parts for the black one's battery. Oh, 12 volt battery is dead, so we can't actually open the trunk there. Got a little bit of damage to the white one here, little ding on the quarter panel and the bumper. But other than that, it's a pretty clean car. It's got the, the slick alloy wheels with the blue, blue accents. And then the black one here is just kind of a base model, hubcaps on steelies. But again, on this one, interior is in pretty decent shape. If I remember right off the top of my head, I think the black one here has about 52,000 miles on it. And the white one only has, I think, 47,000. Um, we might actually be able to see the mileage on the black one here. Maybe. Yeah, I probably could if I put the key in. I think both keys are in the white one, so let's go ahead and check that out. All right, I've got the hood open on the white one here so we can jump the 12-volt battery. It's just got an itty-bitty little 12-volt battery. Looks like uh, basically like what you'd have in a lawn tractor. And it took me a minute to find the hood prop, but it's hidden back here. It's like the tiniest, tiniest hood prop known to mankind. Anyway, we got that in. 
let's get our jump back jump box on here and see if we can get this one to start all right jump box is connected and I hear beeping noises from the car look at that I was right 47,000 miles let's see if it starts okay I've got empty fuel gauge and flashing and a bunch of lights So I'm going to say it probably doesn't drive, but maybe it will. Yeah, not responsive to the pedal. So probably not going to drive. I may be able to try and see if I can clear some codes in it or something and see if we can get it to move under its own power. Um, but yeah, pretty interesting. I mean, it's basically a Japanese K car that was adapted to be electric and then was sold in the US market. So in Japan they sold a gas version of this car that was just called a Mitsubishi I. Um, and then they called the electric version the I Miev, which Miev stands for Mitsubishi Innovative Electric Vehicle. Um, but yeah, it took me a minute to find the hood, hood pole because it's actually on the passenger side, which of course would be driver side for Japanese market. And not very much as far as features for these cars. Uh, you know, it's got your basic manual buttons and knobs and very basic dash display there. Uh, but let me go ahead and grab my scan tool and see if I can clear some codes out on this thing and get it to move. All right, so we've got our scan tool hooked up here and I've got a bunch of fault codes. A lot of them are probably related to 12 volt battery dying. So like we have a code for the immobilizer or rather four codes. Can timeout not equipped, tire pressure low, all that stuff. We've got TPMS, meter, this EVCU. Oops, I clicked the wrong one there. We'll go back. EVCU. EEPROM failure, cell malfunction, BMU. So yeah, this stuff is related to the battery management unit, BMU. And I did notice that there was a code stored on the BMU directly. So let's look at that one. Maybe. Give that another shot. Voltage difference, okay. So that indicates that we probably have some kind of voltage differential issue. And then the CMUs are the individual monitoring boards for each uh, module within the pack. So I think CMU stands for cell monitoring unit or something along those lines. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and hit a race and see if we can clear out codes and get this thing to work again. I mean, it's possible we might need to charge it, too, because it does read empty. I don't know. We'll see. We'll give this a minute to go through and clear all the alerts and see if anything changes. All right, so we still have the faults on the immobilizer. This ETACS, which... Oops, I clicked the wrong one again. I'm not actually sure what that one is, so... We'll click on it and find out. TPMS, uh, whatever this meter thing is. Let's see. Yeah, we want to look at that one. Perhaps. There we go. Oh yeah, that's more tire pressure. Don't know why there's multiple different codes for tire pressure, but that is what it is. We do still have a fault on the EV ECU, but our BMU fault did clear. What's the EV ECU one still have? EEPROM fail. Okay, well, let's see what happens if we try and start. 
still nothing. We go off and back on. Yep, I still get nothing. Well, let me try and see if I can plug it in and see if that makes any difference. Maybe we do just need to charge it. I do have a wrench icon up there, and it does show empty, so I don't know. Oh, the wrench icon went away. I don't know. I'll try and charge it and see if that makes a difference. So I've gone through and looked at all of the cell voltages on all the CMUs, and everything is pretty much at 4.1 volts, you know, plus or minus like 5 or 10 millivolts. There is one that was a little bit low. I think it was off by about 25 millivolts. And then, of course, we have our one really low cell here, which, yeah, there we go, 3.275, which it has increased a little bit since we plugged it in, which doesn't really make sense. I'm thinking that we might have a bad CMU, but the only way to know for sure would be to drop the pack and open it up and take a look at that. Um, I am going to continue to let this thing sit on the charger for a little while, and we'll come back to it and see if we can get it to move. Alright, so I let the car sit on the charger for, I don't know, maybe about 15 or 20 minutes. I just unplugged it and attempted to turn it on, and we do now have ready. We are in turtle mode, but in theory that means that we should be able to move under our own power. So let me put it in reverse. It does indeed move and drive. It moves in drive as well. Well, cool. Let me take the jump pack off. And maybe I'll see if we can just go for a real short little cruise around the block and see if this thing actually seems to drive somewhat decent. Obviously, it's stuck in turtle mode. And we might die, but I do have my forklift wrecker to save us, if need be. Alrighty. In to drive we go. And how about that? It moves under its own power. I don't know if it's beeping at me for seatbelt. We'll put seatbelt on for safety. Not sure what that clicking noise is. That's full throttle, so we have very little power on tap at the moment. Given that we have so little power, should I attempt to make it around the block? I think I'm going to flip a U-turn right here and just go the other way. The other road is a bit more busy and I don't want to get stranded on that one, so we'll just go back this way. Look at that, we're going a whole 20 miles an hour. Okay, well it does move. I don't know what that clunking sound is. It's not, not really clunking, almost like a clicking. Oh, can it make it up the hill? All right, there we go. We'll park it right here behind its sibling. And it does indeed move. Oh, and it just went out of ready. All right, well, I think that's going to have to do it for this. We're going to have to drop the pack on this one, see if we can determine the failure, whether it's an actual cell problem or one of those CMUs that's bad. And maybe we can steal parts from that one to fix this one, or vice versa. Um, or maybe we can fix both if we can source the parts to get both of them running. That one apparently does need a cell. That's what they said, and it, they did remove one of the cells out of it. Presumably it had lower voltage. It's a kind of a known problem on these is sometimes they have cell failures. The cells are a little bit hard to get though. Uh, it's a um, it's a cell made by Yuasa. Don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but if you've ever worked on uh, Japanese motorcycles, usually they have Yuasa 12 volt batteries in them. 
but the batteries in these cars were done under a partnership between Mitsubishi and Yuasa, and it's called an LEV50. And it's kind of a weird cell chemistry. It's actually LMO, which has pretty good low temperature tolerance. Um, but anyway, those LEV50 cells are kind of tough to get for these. I might be able to see if I could scrounge a couple up if this one needs one and that one needs one, or maybe just one if that one needs one. Uh, if we have to replace a CMU on this car, though, that might be hard to source on its own. So, anyways, yeah. Alrighty, well, that's going to be a wrap on this one. We did indeed manage to get the white IMEV here running and driving, at least somewhat. Uh, obviously, it has major issues with the battery that need to be dealt with. And, of course, the black one has the battery already opened up and removed. Uh, as you may have seen in the background, I've got a lot of different cars in my lot here that are customer cars that I need to get moved through the schedule um, so i won't be able to dedicate a whole lot of time in the immediate future to get work done on these cars uh, but hopefully here in the next couple weeks i'll be able to bring one of these in and uh, start doing some real substantive work on them. Uh, but anyways this is just kind of an introduction to these cars they're going to be uh, dedicated project cars just for out of spec renew and uh, you can be sure that you'll be seeing some future videos on getting at least one of these two cars running. Whether or not we can source all the parts and whatnot to get both running, eh, that might be a little bit difficult, so we'll see. But the plan is to get at least one running. Maybe we can get the other one running if we can source cells or CMUs, or maybe even upgrade a battery, who knows. Uh, but anyways, stay tuned, because you'll be able to see all that stuff in the future. <laughs>